If ever you've wondered why Volkswagen would dare remove the Passat wagon from its lineup and soon enough pull the plug on the Golf Sport wagon, well, this is who you blame. This is a 2019 Volkswagen Atlas, and possibly uh, even more to blame is its smaller brother, the Volkswagen Tiguan. In fact, just because they pretty much share all the components with both cars, the Tiguan and Atlas are selling like hotcakes. I mean, if there was a gamble on Volkswagen's behalf, well, it's paying off some immense dividends. But you can't blame Volkswagen for that. We want SUVs and, well, they've actually done a pretty damn good job styling-wise. I, I don't know, it, it's very slab-sided, very square, but just flared enough and that front grille is beautiful. The way it blends into the headlights, very Arteon-esque, although this came out much, much sooner. And I do really like the hood. It's very flat, very broad, and uh, from the driving position, you see a lot of it. I don't know, it gives you an impression of power and stability and commanding the road, which is what all SUVs, SUV buyers want. Anyhow, base price, front wheel drive, two liter turbo, two liter turbo Atlas is $36,740. You do not get that. What you do get or start considering is the lowest entry point for the V6 4 motion, which starts at $40,540. It puts it smack in the middle of it all of all the competitors including the two row ones such as the blazer and the new passport incidentally that's an that's actually an american trim sel so this is an american truck somehow it ended up on the canadian volkswagen press fleet so an sel as specked out like this one is the equivalent of the exact line which is the top top trim which starts at fifty three thousand five hundred and ninety dollars my tester, you may have noticed, includes the R-Line package, which at some point actually did some nice things. I mean, the wheels are okay, but the standard, I forget the names now, the, my brain is not so good. Uh, the standard 20-inch wheels are fine. Uh, essentially what the R-Line package does is remove the power folding outside mirrors, which is kind of dumb. But because this is an R-Line and because I have the captain seats, total price is at just shy of $55,000. But this thing is very, very equipped. Uh, let's just go over a few items on the inside. Uh, I'll get it, there we go. Power hatch is available, uh, like second trim up. With the third row folded, you're looking at something like 15 or 1600 liters of trunk space. It is enormous. That is a massive stroller. And that's one of, well, actually, the support and the seat. Uh, there's more than enough room. In fact, uh, with the third row up, which is right there, it's 583 liters of trunk space, which is still completely accessible, even with the. Anyway, there's a lot of room. Yes. There you go. This has the captain's seats, as I mentioned. So, although the kids are still very young, they can't touch each other, and nor will they ever. But it's it's the amount of room. Look at this. That is an acre of space. There is no way my son's feet can ever touch the seat back, especially with this nice tan-colored perforated leather, which is lovely in here. It's got the massive sunroof. This is probably one of my now favorite features built-in screens or sunshades i should say i absolutely love that and see they're always up even when it's darkish outside anyhow so uh yeah part of the package with the exact line is the fender audio that eight inch screen i'll point that out app connect that's available from near basic a trim model uh seat memories power lumbar anyhow it's fairly loaded one other feature included with this trim is Volkswagen's digital kit, which is superb. Sorry about that. Fender audio showing off. Love the gauges. Everything is very clear and it's configurable. Various menus down here. There we go. So the menus change up on top. I've got uh, intelligent cruise control. It's got all kinds of included active safety features. Here's your drive mode wheel. I don't know that anyone will ever really play with that. Fair amount of storage, there's no wireless charging pad, which is kind of unfortunate, but at least you have one USB all the way back there. 
heated steering wheel, vented and heated seats, which is lovely. The dashboard layout is very simple, very German, ergonomic, flat, accessible. You know, you don't need a you don't need a PhD to figure out how it all works. Plenty of storage, big bin. Oh look, another USB. Storage in the doors, quite complete. Uh, this thing was designed, oh, see, our line package. Ooh, fancy, kind of pointless. Anyway, bottom line with this thing is that it's huge. It's perfect for family duty and happens to look good. And the drive ain't half bad either. So let's get back inside. And so driving the Volkswagen Atlas is, well, unlike driving any other Volkswagen, despite the fact that they all share the same platform. Uh, but having said that, I actually prefer the overall behavior of the Atlas over that of the Tiguan. Something about the way the Tiguan is... I don't know, everything has been sucked out of it. Like, every ounce of Volkswagen-ness has been sucked out of it. So it's just absolutely mundane to drive, uninspiring. Still handles well and does all that, but... When you compare it to this thing, which is much, much bigger, this actually feels nicer. Now compared to the other MQB platform-based vehicles in Volkswagen's extensive lineup, this one could do with a little plusher ride, a little bit more give in the dampers. Uh, I think the culprit behind that are the 20 inch wheels. With the 18s, it might be a little bit better but that would be my only, absolute only complaint. And uh, from the very beginning, a lot of people thought that the VR6 3.6 liter engine was kind of an old way to address a new problem, which is a big SUV for Volkswagen, the first time they ever do anything this big, and slap in an old engine that's been around since, well, since a very long time. But having said that, 276 horsepower, 266 pound-feet of torque, it still does a fair job of getting this massive thing up and going HB automatic transmission plays a wonderful role in that and it's just as comfortable driving like an old man as I am right now as it is hammering away at the gears on the highway uh, even so having said all that I mean Chrysler's 3.6 and GM's 3.6 and Honda's 3.5 to name a few are all a little bit more powerful on paper and a little bit more responsive and energized, if you will, overall. But, there's always a but, um, this thing is not that bad on gas. I've done, a couple of years ago, I covered something like 2,200 kilometers in an Atlas and returned 10 liters per 100 kilometers in very mixed driving. 70, 65-70% of it was done on the highway. But right now I'm on a, I'm on a solid 50-50 mix and I'm still averaging just over 11, which is considerably good. In fact, very, very good. Steering is great, love the brake pedal feel. And then tack in the styling, which in its subtle boxiness is quite attractive. Uh, and the amount of space, it's huge in here. You can move in, seriously, you can move in. Um, in the pricing, which is on par with all of its competition, this thing is a very, very interesting offer. Now, if I had to select it, if I was in the market for a three-row SUV, would I get an Atlas right away, first choice? Oh, God. There are two others that really speak volumes to me. And I think my favorite in this segment remains the, the uh, Subaru Ascent. Great engine. The CVT is just perfectly suited to it. The room, the styling, the design, everything. And at the very opposite end of the spectrum as far as design, technology, and newness, the Dodge Durango. Dodge Durango. The Atlas wedges itself right in between those two. I much, much prefer it over the, the archaic, dinosaur-esque, worse than the, the Durango. Uh, the Pilot, I don't like the Explorer, although the new 2020 Explorer might be interesting. Possibly wait for it, but not really the new Highlander should be interesting this is true um, otherwise today in uh, midway through 2019 Atlas is still one of my absolute top choices